a large wind came and uh, actually blew my neighbor's tree down onto his house. The story throughout Maine today. Utility crews and homeowners in cleanup mode after last night's 70 mile per hour wind gust. And people all over Maine are dealing with property damage, likely costing thousands of dollars. Boats, houses, cars, all wrecked by wind and by downed trees. I'm more concerned with getting power to people's homes so they don't lose their food in their refrigerator and their freezers and having lights and water and, and sewage. Those are the important things. And Governor LePage has declared a state of emergency after last night's destructive storm and says crews are working overtime to get the power back on. Hello, everybody. I'm Lee Goldberg live in Augusta outside Central Maine Power's headquarters here statewide. Mainers are relying on generators, flashlights, candlelight, anything they can do to see tonight because Maine power crews are comparing today's power outages to the height of the ice storm back in 1998 with both Central Maine Power and AmeriMaine registering outages in the tens of thousands. And from the county to Southern Maine's beaches, the damage is unbelievably extensive. This is a look at the flooding of Route 70, 27 in Wyman early this afternoon. Bridges and roads across the state were washed out. This video comes to us from Debbie in Bangor. She says a tree fell and managed to hit her cars and her house. And as the governor said, crews are working around the clock to get the power back on and get the roads reopened. Our storm center team has been all over the place all day long to bring us the most up to date information right now. Christina Rex is in the Twin Cities tonight. We'll have conditions that are going on there. But right now, let's go to Jess Conley for our first look at the weather. And Jess, boy, the wind speeds has been the story of the day. Yeah, Lee, it really has been. We are in Cape Elizabeth right now. The winds are still gusting, as you might be able to tell. Uh, some of the problems with this storm, were, of course, the very high wind speed, but of course, we also have the saturated ground, right? We picked up an inch to an inch and a half, even close to two inches of rain last night in some spots. And we had another rainstorm just a few days ago, so the ground completely saturated. Many people saying that many of the trees they saw down today were actually uprooted from the ground. Of course, when those fall, very heavy, bringing down a lot of power lines uh, across the area today. That is definitely helping to uh, get some of those extremely high outage numbers. Another issue with the storm, the wind direction. Winds with this storm coming out of the southeast as opposed to the northeast, which is where we so often see our uh, winds come from within our nor'easters. As the uh, winds come from a different direction, some of the trees and branches that don't usually get blown around definitely are getting blown around with this storm. You can see again, still pretty breezy out here right now, and we do expect it to stay breezy overnight tonight and into the day tomorrow. Unfortunately, not going to help the crews very much there, uh, but it does look like that will be the situation. At least it is much drier now. We'll send it back to you. All right, Jess, thank you very much. Now, CMP crews uh, have not, or CMP, the organization, has not been able to tell us when exactly it thinks power is going to be restored. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit. They are going to prioritize hospitals and other essential services and obviously making sure that those down power lines are safely grounded. That means sending crews out to remove trees and branches like these crews in South Portland. Tree removal workers helped cut up the fallen limbs and take them off the lines. Power crews from New Brunswick, Canada also on the scene to help fix the lines so that traffic could safely pass through. The CMP spokespeople say safety is the number one priority, but they are certainly working as quickly as they can. Utility workers, public works, first responders were all hands on deck all night long, which is why the governor said he decided to declare a state of emergency to help get them the resources that they need. The governor told us what his office is doing to help the state recover from last night's storm. It's been the equivalent of shoveling out after a nor'easter. Trees down everywhere, blocking roads on homes and cars. A storm that only lasted a handful of hours, but left days and weeks of cleanup behind. Governor LePage declaring a state of emergency. Sort of relaxes some of the rules of uh, the utility people. They can work longer hours on the poles, but there are some restrictions on uh, timing, wind, and all that kind of stuff. The governor spent part of the morning on the road, so he saw some of the damage firsthand. In fact, I want to try to get to Booth Bay today, see if there's some trees on my house. <laughs> Yeah, I hope not, but it, it's, it, was, it was windy out there. It's very, very windy, so 
Uh, it was there were some gusts that were just below hurricane level, so it, it is what it is. So we we dealt with it. I think it's moved on now, and now everybody's going to work to try to put the uh, the power back on. With hundreds of thousands of people without power and a storm like this state hasn't seen in almost two decades, getting back to normal will happen eventually, and it should be much quicker than the ice storm of '98. We don't have the sub degree weather. We don't have the ice on the trees. It's just wind. So which is. While it did a lot of damage, I think we're going to be able to respond and get, get things up and running much, much quicker. Now, the governor did talk about our neighbors to the north who have been here to help us, but the concern is that the people from Canada might actually have to go back home and help out there because these windstorms that came through Maine are heading in that direction. So we'll see how long they can stick around and help us out. I know the state can fix the roads and the bridges, but when it comes to private property, Mainers are starting to assess the damage. Tennyson Coleman went to Falmouth, where boats and docks were hit really hard. Along the coast in Falmouth, devastation. Powerful, energy, unbelievable. The likes of which folks here have not seen in a long, long time. Mother Nature was letting it loose today. The storm that began Sunday night and jolted into Monday left people all over Maine without power and in Falmouth, boats swept up by the storm destroyed. At about 4.30, 5 o'clock, it really exploded. Mark Smith watched the destruction from the Falmouth Town Landing. He recorded video of this boat as it came crashing into land. It was sailing uh, sailing into the pier. It hit the end of the pier, hit the middle of the floats, and then it came ashore right here where the uh, boat launch is. A few hundred feet away, more boats and other property damaged at a dock occupied by the Handy Boat Repair Shop. Neighbors now coming together to rebuild after the storm. Well, this is the first time I've seen the waves breaking five feet right here in the parking lot. It, one came over uh, the hood of my car. A message to mariners. Get your boats out early. It's always good to haul your boats out by mid-October each year. In Falmouth, Tennyson Coleman News Center. All right, we've seen storm damage from all over the state. The pictures and the videos have been unbelievable, but you've got to see this from this couple living in Surrey where they had over 50 trees fall on their property because of the storm, and some of them more than 80 feet tall. This is unbelievable. Patricia and Kevin Pottle bought their home in Surrey back in 2006, completely renovated the house. Now, around 8 o'clock this morning, they decided to leave to avoid danger after the wind started to pick up. When they returned, two hours later, they discovered a tree had fallen on their home and over 50 others had been rooted and thrown across the property by the storm. New Center spoke with Kevin Pottle this afternoon, and he said in his 10 plus years of owning that property, He's never seen any damage like this. We heard the snapping of trees, so we, uh, just by looking out the window, we could see a, it had sheared trees for several hundred feet. Big, mature, healthy trees. I had a forester uh, here earlier looking at the trees. And he hadn't seen anything like it. Just devastation. A lot of structural damage, and uh, we're in the process of trying to get that uh, at least weather tight for, for tonight before we do a survey of, of the real damage. Now the Pottles did spend the afternoon surveying the damage. They plan to get back to reconstruct everything that they can starting first thing tomorrow morning. All right, when we come back, former members of the Trump campaign team indicted today on serious charges, but their attorneys say they're going to fight it. Well, I think you all saw today that President Donald Trump was correct. There is no evidence that Mr. Manafort or the Trump campaign colluded with the Russian government. And money laundering, foreign lobbying crimes, two of the accused say they are not guilty. Also ahead, with no power, can Halloween trick-or-treating go on as scheduled? Some towns are going to postpone the holidays when we come back. Coming up tonight on 207, now this is an interesting journey. Leanne Lord went from working in a corporate cubicle to doing stand-up comedy. She'll talk to us about that experience. And we'll check out new movies and videos with the boys from Bulmos on 207. 
three representatives from the Trump presidential campaign are charged by the FBI. Hello, everyone. I'm Amanda Hill with your news now. George Papadopoulos, a former foreign policy advisor, pleaded guilty to making false statements to the FBI about his connections to senior Russian government officials. But a former Trump campaign manager and his longtime business associate pleaded not guilty to a long list of indictments, including conspiracy against the U.S. Now, the investigation in today's indictment include a complicated web of allegations against Paul Manafort and Rick Gates. Here's a simplified explanation according to the indictment. The indictment lists three main categories of charges against the pair. Money laundering, tax charges, and foreign lobbying crimes. We'll start with money laundering. In the indictment, the special counsel says Manafort laundered more than $18 million to buy properties and services. The indictment says Manafort hid his wealth overseas to, quote, enjoy a a lavish lifestyle in the U.S. without paying income taxes. Gates is accused of transferring more than $3 million from offshore accounts as part of his work for Manafort. Now for the tax charges. You saw a little bit on the screen. The indictment says not only did Manafort not pay income taxes on his hidden overseas wealth, but it alleges both Manafort and Gates lied about that money to bookkeepers, accountants, and legal counsel. That income came from a consultant work that Manafort and Gates did with the former president of Ukraine. Now, the indictment alleges that both Manafort and Gates failed to register as agents of the government in Ukraine and made false statements on federal forms related to that work. The White House spokesperson today says the legal moves have no impact on the president's agenda. Or there's no intention or plan uh, to make any changes in regards to special counsel. Uh, but look, today's announcement has nothing to do with the president, has nothing to do with the president's campaign or campaign activity. Uh, the real collusion scandal, as we've said several times before, has everything to do with the Clinton campaign, Fusion GPS, and Russia. There's clear evidence of the Clinton campaign colluding with Russian intelligence to spread disinformation and smear the president to influence the election. We've been saying from day one there's been no evidence of Trump-Russia collusion, and nothing in the indictment today changes that at all. She went on to say the president has not spoken about whether or not he will consider pardoning his former colleagues. She says they plan to let the legal process play out. Maine State Police are investigating Saturday morning's death in Whitneyville as a homicide. A public safety spokesperson says the body of Wayne Foss was found inside his burning mobile home after investigations by police and fire marshals. Officials announced today major crimes has taken over the homicide investigation. Wayne Foss was a fisherman who lived in the mobile home with his wife and son who were not home the night of that fire. According to officials, we will continue to update that story. With power outages across the state, a lot of people are firing up their generators, but if used improperly, they can actually be a huge fire risk. Chris Costa is live with a fire official from South Portland to talk about generator safety. Hey, Chris. Hey Amanda, I'm here with Rob Couture and Grace McKenzie, uh, a paramedic and an EMT here uh, at the Cape Elizabeth Fire Department. And as you can see, we've got a generator right here. Rob, obviously so many people without power tonight, these are gonna come in handy. What do people need to do on the safety front to make sure they don't cause any damage to their home or themselves? Yeah, well the biggest thing obviously is to making sure that you're running the generator outside. Um, running a generator inside, not ventilated, will kill you. Carbon monoxide is colorless, odorless. You're not gonna know it's there. It's gonna build up very quickly with a generator which has an external exhaust. Um, so we need to make sure that they're outside, 15 feet at least away from any buildings, windows, doors, anything that would let that carbon monoxide back in. And another big thing people need to be careful about is the wind direction if they have this outside, sure. correct? Can you explain why? Yeah, daylight today, even if you're 15 feet away, if you have an open window, door, some avenue for that carbon monoxide to get in the building, the wind's strong enough today, it's going to push that towards your residence. Why don't we get this thing fired up, Grace? Go ahead. Uh, and we should talk about this. It's obviously very important for people to make sure that they read the, in the instruction manual that w if they are a first-time owner. Um, what? How can you properly operate this once it's outside? Yeah, one thing I think we see a lot of times with storms like this, people going out buying new generators that aren't used to running generators. You really got to pull that manual out, go through it, read the operator's manual, understand how it works, how it functions. If you're going to have it permanently wired into your residence and it's done by a professional, 
professional. But if you've never run one, it's really worth the time to take just a few minutes, go over that owner's manual, and make sure that you're using it properly. Mm -hmm. And, and plugging in uh, directly to the generator if possible. And also yes. you had mentioned earlier, making sure that it's the appropriate size. That's all the time we have for now. We're gonna come back and talk to these guys a little bit later. We'll send it back to Amanda in the studio. All right, Chris, thanks. Still to come on now. No, nothing ever ruins Halloween. This is, this is uh, sacred. Huh? A tree may be blocking his front yard, but this mayor says a storm is not going to ruin trick-or-treating. An update on your Halloween plans. And speaking of, after last night's storm, can we expect calmer weather for All Hallows' Eve? Keith Carson has the full forecast coming up. Welcome back, everybody. All this mess on the roads is coming one day before all the kids are going to be out on the streets tomorrow for Halloween and trick-or-treating. But is this going to stop anybody from trick-or-treating? We sent Christina Rex to one of the most popular places to trick-or-treat in our state to give us the answer. Hey, K-Rex. Hey Lee, this road here, Pond Road in Lewiston, has been closed down for most of the day. It's reopened now, but that's because of this down power line behind me. One main man is hoping that gets fixed quickly. No, not just because he wants his power back, but because he wants to see the more than 1,000 kids who usually line up to get their king size candy from him on Halloween night. No, nothing ever ruins Halloween. This is this is um, sacred. Few people love Halloween. The Exorcist girl sitting over here, her head spins around. More than Peter Geiger. Little, when I was a little little child, my brother, who who's very anal about where to go for the best candy, you know, we used to have this this city mapped, and we, we'd go where all the good stuff was. So I always wanted to be the good stuff, the good guy. So he made it happen by saving his change in a jar every year. That change became thousands of dollars, which Geiger uses to buy more than 4,000 king size candy bars for Halloween. My, my kick is seeing the families year after year after year and um, just saying, saying hi to them, even even for just one, one night. Um, that's what I like, like, I like about Halloween. It's, it's about the family. It's All you need, the secret password and three king size candy bars and a trip through the haunted house are all yours. You know, we got the usual cast of characters. Halloween night might be a little extra haunted this year at 16 Brentwood Ave after Sunday night's windstorm left Geiger in the dark. I mean, flashlights, spooky. And his yard uprooted. So when I got up this morning, everything was fine. When I got outside, this tree fell landed on my car. The tree didn't cause any major damage to the house or car. The path it actually wiped out three or four of my props, but we shall persevere. We An extra spooky look. It was, I mean, it was howling last night, and then what more can you do for Halloween than howl? For a man who won't let a little weather get in the way of his favorite holiday. I'm, I'm good to go with or without power. Got the candy, that's all that matters. I got the secret password in my head, but not revealed, and uh, we're, we're, good. we're gonna be good to go tomorrow. To learn more about trick-or-treating or cancellations in your area, make sure you check your local police department or town office Facebook page. Some towns have already postponed York until tomorrow night. Topsom's waiting all the way until Friday to trick-or-treat. Also, my friend Katie Ortiz has been keeping track of the timeline and all the pictures you guys have been sending us on social media in the wake of this storm. Hey, Katie. Hey, Christina. Yeah, lots of pictures to comb through today since the storm pummeled not only Maine, but the Northeast itself. Let's take a look here. Many areas saw completely uprooted trees and I was talking about this with Keith earlier today. The ground was already saturated with water from last week's rain, which made it easier for trees to topple over. Homes, cars, businesses all suffered serious damage. A few of them, some pretty close calls. It's amazing that we haven't had really any reports of any injuries considering what we're looking at right now. I will say though, on a lighter note, I've never seen so many transplanted trampolines. In the winter, we have the snowfall pictures of the back deck with the grills and in the fall, apparently we have trampolines in the wrong places. Now Lee, you better check and see if yours is still there or all 12 of your kids are gonna be upset when you get home. I'll send it back to you in Augusta. <laughs> I spent all of yesterday securing that trampoline. No matter what happened, the tramp couldn't go away. All right, we're going to get to some weather because that's pretty important, obviously, right now. Keith Carson's in our studio. We'll get to him in a second. Jess Conley's in Cape Elizabeth. Jess, that wind, is it going to pick up again tonight? Yeah, Lee, in Cape Elizabeth right now, we're still feeling gusts of about 35 miles an hour. And unfortunately, it doesn't look like it's really going anywhere overnight tonight or through the day tomorrow. The other thing that's going to be an issue tonight, so many people without power, those low temperatures, 
they're going to cool off. Upper 30s and low 40s is what we're talking about for our overnight lows. So it's going to feel pretty chilly in the next night, Tuesday night into Wednesday. It's going to drop even cooler than that. We're talking about temperatures that could drop down to around the freezing mark. So it is going to be pretty chilly for people uh, without power. Just be prepared for that. And we're going to send it back to Keith, who's in the studio now, to tell you about the rest of the forecast. A couple of nights in the upper 30s and do okay. All right, here's a look at the best wind gust. Matinicus Rock, the winner. Matinicus Rock, if you're not familiar with where it is, it is quite isolated, about 20, 25 miles off the coast of Rockland. Portland, 69 miles an hour, and then some in the low 70s, a lot in the mid 60s. These are wind gusts, of course, not sustained. Still good enough, though, for number seven on the all-time strongest wind gusts in Portland's recorded history, which, by the way, goes back to 1872, and they're clustered all around 70 to 75 miles an hour. So in rarefied air for sure. As just mentioned, still some gusty winds out there. They're gusting 25 to 30 miles an hour out of a different direction now, out of the north and west. I don't anticipate that we'll see any additional problems tonight. If your trees made it through 70 miles an hour, they're probably going to make it through the 25 to 30 we'll have overnight tonight. Here comes the last of the rain. We did see quite a bit of rain. That's a story that's somewhat getting buried in all of this, right? We had some flash flooding across western Maine. There was a ton of moisture associated with this storm. All this moves away. The wind starts to die down late tonight, early tomorrow morning. Pretty good looking day for Halloween itself. Mostly sunny skies and a little bit cool. Then high pressure tries to stay in place for Wednesday. It gets pushed out of the way on Thursday and we get into the warm sector Thursday night and into Friday. So hour by hour forecast looking good through tomorrow. It is worth noting tomorrow night we could see a flurry or two in the higher terrain. All right, the extended forecast up and down, a little bit cool here tomorrow, Wednesday, and even into Thursday. We may break into some really nice stuff though on Friday. Saturday looks good, temperatures in the low 50s. And then at this point, I don't love Sunday. I think it has some showers around, highs only in the upper 40s and getting warmer for Monday. So the best day it looks like probably of this week is likely to be around 70 degrees. Hopefully at that point, Amanda, everybody has their power back, but if not, the temperature's at least a little bit on the mild side at that moment. All right, thanks, Keith. A lot more Storm Center coverage coming up at 5.30. Here's a look. Homeowners in the Lakes region dealing with wind damage just months after tornadoes tore through that area. And on the New Hampshire border, the damage is causing severe roadblocks. Chris Rose will show us the bridges compromised by the weather. Those stories and more coming up in the next half hour. News Center now continues in a moment. Kids from Memorial Middle School in South Portland helped clean up leaves in people's yards today. The activity was originally set for Wednesday as a fundraiser for the school's outing club. But once school was canceled today, teacher Matt Lunt organized a handful of students to get together to rake up the brush. It ended up being a great way to keep the kids occupied while there was no school and no power. We also are well aware that a lot of you do not have power. And the only way you can see our newscast is through Facebook. So as you know, stay on our Facebook pages. You'll be able to see our 530 news, our 6 o'clock news, and our 11 o'clock news all live on Facebook. A new center at 530 starts right now.